Hello, I'm going to be speaking about online open access pediatric orthopedic education. And I'm Lynn Staley, and a pediatric orthopedist from Seattle, and representing Global Health Organization and also the Pediatric Orthopedic Academy. I want to bring you greetings from Seattle. We're in the far northwest corner of the United States and also the home of Boeing, Microsoft, Amazon, and Starbucks. And I'm sorry to miss this, this meeting, and I thank you for allowing the presentation we made remotely. Global Health Organization, sometimes referred to as GHO users, are from around the world. Nearly 200 countries are represented. And it's interesting that India is by far and away the most commonly um, a common country that uses our material, nearly a quarter of all materials that downloaded in India. And you see this is very important to us, what particularly answered why I wanted to come and participate in your program. Global Health Organization was founded in 2002 as a humanitarian response to the 9-11 event with the mission to provide health care information for the underserved and a philosophy that is humanitarian, non-political, and values racial, cultural, and religious diversity, and has evolved over the years to focus on children's problems and specifically on pediatric orthopedics. We have a website, www.global-help.org, and you see we have over 200 videos. We've had 14 million downloads. We've had over uh, uh, tens of thousands of publications. We have uh, about a, over 100 different publications in 35 languages. We've had a lot of video views, and we've had from material downloaded from around, used from around the world. So uh, these are the countries that, and sites where most of our downloads have occurred in our new website at Pediatric Orthopedic Academy. Global Health Organization has also produced the Ponsetti Red Book, which is used around the world in as many 35 languages. The Pediatric Surgery for Africa, 10,000 uh, or 1,000. Uh, hard copies are distributed and over a million downloads of various chapters in the whole book. DVD library, which is made available for a dollar. 30 textbooks and the new website for distribution of pediatric orthopedic information. And we think that India is the ideal place to making content because you folks are tech savvy, you speak English, you're very well educated, and you're experienced in global use, which all make it very attractive site for making material. We're also piggybacking on the visionary thoughts and concept of Salman Khan, who initiated the new philosophy in education, learning by watching videos, and then in class discuss the topic and ask questions, and wrote the One World Schoolhouse, which uh, uh, describes his concept. And he himself made over 3,000 videos of math education at Star of the Academy and created the Khan Academy for open access YouTube videos that has transformed how tens of millions of students around the world perceive and approach math. And he also showed that very simple videos can be very effective. They don't need to be glitzy. They don't need to be fancy. Very simple are often more effective. He also initiated the concept of the flipped classroom, which is now catching on. And Wikipedia points out that this is most uh, likely due to the Salman Khan's original concept to have established the academy. And the philosophy is that students learn on their own best, their own speed, their own location, where they can look at material over and over again if necessary, or move on as, as they master the information. And then they go to class or to conferences and discuss uh, what they've learned with their teacher, asking questions, and share ideas. So this is a new concept which is really catching on now. And it could be a new direction for pediatric orthopedic education, allowing individual study and then conferences rather than doing didactic lectures would be where material is discussed, where cases are presented and ideas are, are shared. And this also allows a personal contact that people value. So it doesn't eliminate that element of the, uh, of the educational process. We all know that we're living in an educational age. And access is varied. It can be limited access where you have to have a login or organizational membership where you have to pay for access. Or it can be delayed. People annoyed by distracting ads or having to delay or getting the material to watch some sort of ad, 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 ad. Or it can be open access. Like in Wikipedia, 
the Global Health Organization, or the Journal of Children's Orthopedics, where you go directly to the information that you're looking for. We established the Pediatric Orthopedic Academy as a distribution website, a subsidiary of Global Health Organization, uh, that is uh, also and plan to have a Spanish language uh, edition created, perhaps other languages as well. And it's designed to make navigation as easy as possible. You first navigate by focusing on the anatomical location, if it's, if it's uh, focused that way or described that way. If not, like it's, for instance, cerebral palsy, you go to generalized, or changing topics that are current of current interest, or special searches as shown on the left uh, column. For example, for the hip, if you click on hip, you find all the information in PDF and videos on the hip problems. If you go to authors, find all the authors listed in alphabetical order, and also their publications that can be they can be uh, uh, accessed by simply clicking their link to their original site. Or textbooks. We have a lot of textbooks uh, that are available that are free. They're not always the last edition, but are recent editions and are very valuable for people for reference. And cost-saving tips, particularly useful in the developing world or where cost-saving is important. And these are where we can have people uh, learn ways of dealing with problems that are affordable and usable worldwide. The challenge is creating content because technology is easy and creating the content itself is really the difficult and the challenging part of making new material available. And the content is best made in lean countries and if so it can be used for doctors worldwide because lean countries are really healthier in many ways than fat countries. And <clears throat> the material should be relevant uh, for the problems, affordable, uh, using a technology that's readily available like simple imaging and physical examination and uh, using instrument, uh, in, uh, uh, implants that are relatively, rel relatively widely available and is non-commercial and is necessary, not treating conditions that resolve spontaneously. And it's also evidence-based whenever possible. This all means we need a pediatric orthopedic syllabus to create a comprehensive source for material both in video and PDF format that covers all of the subjects of pediatric orthopedics. And this would be valuable and even in fat countries because the, material, the fat countries are getting so uh, expensive in terms of management that it's got to change. And so it's, our material is tailored for global use. And we think that in, in, if it's going to be uh, uh, limited in the future that it's better for doctors, not politicians, to decide how to uh, ration material. So we've envisioned this as a go-to first site, a comprehensive textbook of specialty, as we mentioned, and a quick reference source that's authoritative, evidence-based, and proposes management that's suitable for wide use, and is commercial-free and easily accessible and reliable. The basic syllabus, we think, and envision being comprehensive, perhaps 500 or 1,000 topics, that provides a systematic way of learning especially for residents, students, practitioners, anyone wants information. And it could easily be created by a panel of, of orthopedists and if made here, could be referred to as a POSI syllabus and be funded by global help and industry with, and the understanding the industry does not control the content. Other projects could be commission projects. The POSI syllabus would be perhaps a major one, but also master techniques for people who have learned how to uh, do a particular, or treat a particular problem effectively and, they, and affordably could share their information worldwide. And new publications. For example, a year ago we made, in, December, in February, uh, I went to Chile and we made uh, 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 50 videos in two days, narrated both in Spanish and English. And some, some of the types of videos that we look forward to is things that are very simple. This one is made at Children's Hospital in Seattle, but again shows how the, how, how the video format is so good for pediatric orthopedics. It's such a visual specialty. It's ideal suited for that purpose. This was made in Santiago, showing how to apply the public harness. And this is on YouTube, so parents can go back and look at this over and over again and free access to the information without any limitations. Or the, or the doctors can learn how to apply it. Or the examination of Perthes disease, for example, how showing how the loss of mobility, even a subtle loss, 
is really evident on physical examination and how important physical examination is and can be done ineffectively. Another example is a pre-med student that we commissioned to go to, to, uh, ba to uh, uh, Nepal, and she made a book on burn contractures and teamed up with the doctors there to, because they have a lot of burns from infants who fall into fires. And she, is, she uh, produced this wonderful book that has had 200,000 downloads in several languages and is now a plastic surgery resident. So these kind of commission projects could be po possible uh, future uh, uh, challenges. So in summary, we envision an online open access pediatric orthopedic goal to be expanded, creating content that's appropriate for worldwide use. The challenge is in creating this content. And we think that POSI could be an ideal organization for creating new publications and videos. I thank you for watching.